This is Salma Schimmel for the group room in Chicago at the AACR annual meeting. That's the American Association for Cancer Research. And our discussion continues as we move into the area of pancreatic cancer. Happy to be joined by Dr. Diane Simeone, who's the director of the Pancreatic Tumor Program at the University of Michigan Medical Center. Dr. Simeone is also uh, professor of surgery and professor of molecular and integrative physiology. Welcome. Glad to be here. I'm happy you are here because that's a challenging disease and a difficult disease. Mm -hmm. And you're going to give us uh, a little pancreatic cancer 101 and then maybe we could talk about some of the innovative therapies and the work you're doing with stem cells. Sure. Pancreatic cancer is a tough one. It's probably the last major one to, to fall, if you will. Um, if you just look at numbers or statistics, um, pancreatic cancer is the fourth leading cause of cancer death in the United States. And for most patients who get a diagnosis of pancreatic cancer, um, they will succumb to the disease. Uh, it has the highest mortality rate of any major malignancy. Um, a lot of people wonder why that is. Well, I think the reasons are multifold. One, um, it's um, very uncommon to detect the disease early. In fact, only about 15% of patients have the disease detected early enough that the tumors are amenable to surgical resection. 85% uh, of people have a disease that's too advanced to remove surgically. Um, currently, surgical resection is the only um, treatment option for cure. But even in that uh, cohort of patients that undergo surgical resection, which is you know what I spend some of my time doing, 75% um, uh, uh, of those patients will recur with an average time of about two and a half years. So clearly we have an incomplete understanding of the disease and it's probably already advanced by the time we pick it up. What is the role of the pancreas? The pancreas um, sits way in the back of the abdomen. That's one of the problems. It's hard to palpate, it's, it's hard to access. Um, it has really two major functions. The first one is digestive in nature. It produces digestive enzymes which uh, result in um, um, processing of fats and proteins and it produces uh, insulin. So it has a uh, dual function, both of which are very important. How do patients usually present and what are the warning signs mm -hmm. that may bring a patient to see the doctor? So for most patients with pancreatic cancer, the symptoms are often initially pretty vague. Some abdominal discomfort, perhaps some unexplained weight loss, Many of uh, the tumors actually are present in the head of the gland, which is where the bile duct traverses to empty um, bile from the liver into the intestine. And so the tumor will squeeze down on that bile duct and cause jaundice or yellowing of the eyes. And when people notice that, then they really realize something is, is wrong and seek medical attention. Another thing for patients to know about is the association between pancreatic cancer and diabetes, not often recognized by people or even uh, physicians. Um, if you have new onset diabetes that's unexplained, in particular in patients who are non-obese um, after the age of 50, then they should seek uh, evaluation by their physician in consideration of the diagnosis of pancreatic cancer. Who, in addition to, as you mentioned now, alcohol mm -hmm. consumption, who else could be at risk? What are the associated risk mm -hmm. factors that may make one more susceptible to pancreatic cancer? Well, probably the biggest risk factor is smoking. It's actually thought that a full 25% of cases are associated with smoking. Um, somewhere between 8 and 10% are hereditary or familial. Um, sometimes we understand what the genetic mutations are in particular families, but there are some families we still don't know what the cause is, but we know that multiple family members have had the disease. Um, there is a link, not only um, with pancreatic cancer causing diabetes, it's thought that something, a substance made by pancreatic cancer cells is diabetogenic, but it has also been shown that having type 2 diabetes over the long term can also increase your risk for pancreatic cancer. What do we know now about the relationship between those with the BRCA mutation mm -hmm. and pancreatic cancer? So there clearly is an increased risk for patients who have BRCA mutations and pancreatic cancer, although it is still somewhat controversial how to best screen or follow those patients. Um, certainly, if uh, you or a family member have a 
BRCA mutation, you should seek consultation by a medical genetics team to get recommendations for evaluation and follow-up. Yes, because we tend to mostly associate that mutation with mm -hmm. breast and ovarian cancer, then we're learning more about prostate cancer, mm -hmm. and now as we talk about uh, pancreas cancer, mm -hmm. it would then be important for someone who knows they have that mutation to understand their, their own risk, but mm -hmm. how does someone who has that mutation follow themselves mm -hmm when it's such an elusive disease? So probably the best screening methodology is a kind of test called an endoscopic ultrasound. It's a type of endoscopy, um, but the, the scope or probe is, is specialized where there's an ultrasound probe at the end of the scope. So the patients are sedated, a scope is put down, and the pancreas sits right behind the stomach. So the scope is left in the stomach and you can get a very detailed close examination of the pancreas, even seeing lesions as small as a couple millimeters in size. That procedure sees the esophagus, the it stomach, can. and mm -hmm. the pancreas. Mm -hmm. Correct. Treatment. Mm -hmm. Where are we at as far as treatment options mm -hmm. and molecular therapies, and in mm -hmm. your case, stem cells? Standard chemotherapy has been the mainstay of treatment for pancreatic cancer, but the truth of the matter is it, in general, has not been very effective. Um, there is some data. It has moved the curve. Uh, to the right perhaps a few months, but certainly um, not much more than that. Um, there's been recent data using combinatorial chemotherapy, for example, data with a combination called fulfurinox that um, seems to perhaps be a little bit better than standard chemotherapy, which is gemcitabine-based. Um, but it's still we're just talking about extending lifespan in the order of months rather than years. There are a, a number of new um, uh, agents that are in the pipeline. There's increasing work that's been done in uh, a number of laboratories that suggest that um, certain signaling pathways may be very important in driving pancreatic cancer cell function. And there's a whole group of them that are called developmental signaling pathways. Pathways that are really important in development but are pretty quiescent during adulthood, except in the instances of um, cancer where these very primitive pathways are reactivated. And there are a number of drugs that are working their way through the system, and in fact, some of them already in clinical trial uh, to test their e efficacy uh, in pancreatic cancer. Some of those um, developmental signal pathways we have found are important for the function of pancreatic cancer stem cells. So what are pancreatic cancer stem cells? We did work, uh, it's now been several years um, that we initially published this work where we found that in human pancreatic cancers that not all the cancer cells are the same, but there is a subset of cancer cells within the cancers that are really the drivers for the cancer that promote tumor formation and seem to be critical for metastasis. So we've been working on understanding the biology of that subset of cells so that we can figure out how to target those cells in addition to the bulk cancer cells within a tumor. So um, another important aspect of cancer stem cells that we have discovered is they're very resistant to standard chemotherapy and radiation and in that manner are actually quite similar to normal stem cells which have inherent mechanisms to resist forms of damage to DNA like chemotherapy and radiation, so alternative approaches to target those cells will be needed. We do think that that population of cells will need to be targeted along with the bulk of the non-cancer stem cells within the cancer to most effectively um, uh, remove the tumor. Lifespan once you're diagnosed? Uh, it depends what stage you're diagnosed with. If you are diagnosed with metastatic pancreatic cancer, it's usually in the order of several months, although if you are able to get to a center that has expertise in pancreatic mm -hmm. cancer, that will give the opportunity to try to extend that survival um, a bit. And maybe get on a clinical trial. Yeah, and certainly um, clinical trials are very important and you need to make sure you ask your physician about what clinical trials you might be a candidate for, and impor importantly, uh, we do recommend that if you, especially if you're not in a specialized center, to seek a second opinion about your care. Um, that's important because you may get a different opinion and, and you may get a treatment algorithm that may be uh, more attractive. This is you. one disease that one really benefits by going to a cancer center, an yeah. academic center. 
if one is lucky enough to get diagnosed early, mm -hmm. what's their prognostic outcome? Well, we're, we were uh, just discussing this data last night at our Pancreatic Cancer Action Network dinner. Even for pa patients who have diagnosed with stage one who have a resection, the recurrence rate is still 70%. So clearly this is a disease that becomes metastatic early, and we need to understand the mechanisms by which that occurs. What do you need from the advocate and patient community? Obviously, PANCAN mm -hmm. and the Lesgarten Foundation are mm -hmm the two organizations that I know of that are out there actively mm -hmm. uh, trying to propel research and mm -hmm. mobilize patients and other advocates. Do you need more tissue? What do you need from patients? I think patients usually are very willing to participate in clinical trials, provide biosamples, samples of blood, samples of tissue to help advance our understanding of the disease. I think probably the most critical thing is an increase in funding for research in the disease. Currently, it's a very tiny sliver of the NCI budget, and if we really want to have an attack on trying to understand pancreatic cancer and make inroads in curing it, we really need to have more people come to the field. And hence, if we can get more research funding in this area, that will help with that piece. I sincerely hope that we will see a, a shift on behalf of these patients. We've seen so much progress with many other the cancer types. Mm -hmm. This one's a tough one. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for what you do, Dr. Diane Simeone, Director of the Pancreatic Tumor Program at the University of Michigan Medical Center. Thank you.